My name's uh, Greg Hartrell. I'm the lead product manager for Google Play Games. and I'm Dan Galpin. I'm a peon developer advocate here at Google. So we're going to talk to you a little bit about Google Play Games, our, our online network, and, and a little bit about preceding some of the, uh, the, the, gro the growth story that we heard from Chris Yerga. So Chris told us about the, the, the incredible gaming momentum we have with Android and, and Google Play. And to recap some of those metrics, you know, we have over a billion activated Android devices, and three in four of those Android users are playing games. That's, that's a ton of gamers. We know that developers are reaching an unprecedented audience of, of gamers like never before. Um, and, and the more interesting thing is when we take a look at that momentum, it's helped propel Google Play Games, our online game network, um, to uh, tremendous growth. Uh, so we're sharing with you the stat today that we have seven, over 75 million new users who've joined us in only six months. So since we launched at Google I.O. last year, we've spoken to many of you who have adopted. We've spoken to many of our players, and we're just delighted by these results. And I'd, I'd just like to thank, and Dan and I would like to thank every one of you for, for, for adopting us and for helping make us it's this successful in this short, short period of time. We think that this is one of the greatest growth opportunities for game developers today, and we'll take you through a little bit of that right now. So if you step back and you look at Google Play Games, it's basically Google's online game network with user experiences and services designed to enhance gameplay, bring all of these players together, and in a matter of speaking, take Android and mobile gaming to the next level. Um, many of these services are available cross-platform to developers through SDKs, through Android, iOS, and the web. And for players, they're engaging in these experiences in-game and through our Play Games app. But that said, th there's a lot more to these services than just the game, you know, the achievements, leaderboards, multiplayer, and cloud safe services that we have. The way to think about Play Games is it's a concentrated network of people who enjoy playing games. And in an ecosystem this large, it's essential for us to bring all of these people together and help you connect them to your content. So for those of you who have adopted Play Games, we, we've talked with you and we've looked at our own data and we know some interesting properties about these players. We know that they're playing longer, they play more often, and they're more likely to monetize in your title. So some of you have experienced double-digit bumps in engagement and retention stats, or have seen a lift in revenue after launching Play Games. We know that we're helping many of these games just reach new heights. But there's nothing magic about Google Play Games. It's not like you just integrate the services and magic happens. It's really more about how do you use the tool sets to engage these users and these mobile users that are there. And so you can imagine in mobile gaming, there's a very diverse audience that you're trying to reach. And similar to the way that you think about the thematics of your title and what type of audience you're trying to reach, you also need to think of how these tool sets will resonate with the different types of players. Um, so one way to think about them, and there's many, is how in interested they are in social or just social openness with a spectrum of people who are not very interested and very high. So Dan's going to use his best science class voice to help us understand how Android Labs thinks about these, these users. Here at Android Labs, we've done extensive research, which leads us to the conclusion that there are three fundamental gamer archetypes, the competitor, achiever, and stealth gamer. These archetypes can be charted based approximately on how open they are to social interaction. At the open end of our scale, the competitor archetype engages in everything, achievements, leaderboards, and multiplayer. They thrive in competitive and deep cooperative experiences. They own every console, their personal homepage lists their achievements and scores, and not just from one network. They play games on mobile for the same reason that Captain Kirk climbed mountains in Star Trek IV, because they're there. Achiever is the other side of the openness spectrum. They thrive in progression, solving problems and revealing story, but they're averse to playing in social situations. This is the mobile equivalent of the people that worked to earn a million points in Geometry Wars without dying, the people that played Final Fantasy VIII to get the two minute long Eden summons. Like the competitor, these guys are looking for deeper phone and tablet experiences. The stealth is a funny persona. They don't view themselves as a gamer, but they play every day. And while they are less likely to engage in direct social interactions, they welcome passive interactions. This means they can be engaged to help a friend or uh, by comparing themselves to another player, so long as the social interaction is fast and the impact is immediate. With these three personas in mind, I'm going to hand it over to Greg to cover how play games can help you reach each one of them. That's fantastic. I already feel like I'm in fifth grade science class again. <laughs> the, um, so, so, so let's take a look at the competitor persona in, in a little bit more depth. So the toolkit here are our social and public leaderboards and our, our multiplayer capabilities. 
Um, and this, these cater very well to somebody who has that, want the, that competitive and cooperative experience. Uh, when, when you look at social and public leaderboards, it's intuitive. This is the classic way of engaging a competitor streak. I think what you see here is, is that you know, somebody chasing their, their score, they're going to try to get in front of their friends. And what we found is, is that our social leaderboards are particularly effective in encouraging people to reach out to their friends saying, hey, come play this game, and oh, by the way, try to beat my score. Moving on to, to the multiplayer capabilities that we have, maybe the best example we have most recently is from a game called uh, Clumsy Bird. Clumsy Bird used our, our real-time multiplayer capabilities to drive an intense amount of social interaction and repeat gameplay. They did this in the form of using our auto-matching system to create a five-round elimination tournament. This ended up rewarding players for you know, making it to the end. And with the auto-matching capability we have is, is really fantastic because it gives your players access to what might be described as the, the hidden social graphic or game. That is, people who are playing the game right now, and these players are getting into games in seconds, uh, which is a highly gratifying experience for this type of, type of user. Uh, we also have an invite system, so uh, Clumsy Bird also integrates that, where I can invite you know, a player like Dan and ask really penetrating questions like how can I beat his score and how did you get that fancy hat for your bird? Yeah, I think the really cool thing is that this game really used our services to stand out from other similar games on the platform. <laughs> to say the least. Okay, so moving on to, uh, we also have turn-based multiplayer. Uh, intuitive that if you have a title that has, is literally turn-based or where gameplay sessions are played in increments over many days or many hours, um, very useful toolkit. Uh, good, good to point out in our invite system that Google will help rank users based on how frequently you engage with them. So being able to show you players that you've replayed with recently or people who are actively playing helps people get into a game even faster and appeals again to that, that competitor persona. But the, the growth hack here is, is, is interesting. So if we take a look at, at our, our, our notification system, um, what this allows is an opportunity for social discovery in your game. So if you've integrated multiplayer, you automatically get the ability to notify users through the millions and millions of Android users that are out there. And we, we took this to heart and we've made some changes to the way that we've done notifications, launching in play services, this rolling out this week, um, with, and expanding the way that we think about it. So we call it priority notifications. So let, let's, let's take, go through an example of how this might work. So today, if, you, if let's say uh, Dan invites me to a game, by default he's in my circles, I would see Dan's face, his, the fact that he wants to play Frozen Front with me and my phone would buzz and I'd see it in the shade. But let's say I got invited by somebody who is not in my circles and I, they want, they're interested in playing with me. So in this new rubric, we're going to be able to sh silently aggregate these people in the notification and I don't yet know who this user is. So I, if I tap on the notification, you'll see that there's two users, Dan's on the left in my circles, who, and I can play with a game, a game with him immediately, and on the right you have this handsome devil who clearly you want to play a game with him, and you can go and see more, and you can add, the, add him to your circles or play games with him. And again, if I don't have this game, I'm taken to the Play Store, I'm converted into a new user, and that's a little bit of a growth hack for you using multiplayer games. Okay, that's the competitor in a nutshell. Um, let's talk about the achiever. So the toolkit here is pretty simple. This is the user that's progression oriented. They're gonna complete all the story and they're going to earn every achievement that you put into your game. Uh, quality achievements are essential here and leaderboards have a tendency of, of driving this user as well. But the key message we wanna leave with you today is design great achievements. Uh, and that sounds easy to say and it's very easy to do. Uh, and we see that titles that do this really well are seeing a lift in engagement and improving the retention of their titles. So let's take for example a game like Plague Inc. For those of you that haven't played a Plague Inc, and I would be impressed for those of you in this room that haven't, um, Plague Inc is this, this, this simulator that allows you to engineer a virus to destroy all humans. And uh, you know, if you learned in, in a supervillain class, you know, after you destroy the world, you're really just supposed to go on vacation and maybe retire. Um, but, that, that, but that leaves you out on the opportunities of all the exotic ways that you can destroy the world. So as the achiever, I'd be able to look at the achievements and say, oh, there's other ways for me to go about this. I can potentially cause World War III. Fascinating. Um, or I could uh, infect astronauts, apparently. Viruses in space. This is the most awesome game this ever. This game is awesome. Okay, so very easy for you to accomplish. Bottom line is achievements matter. We have this Play Games developer practices uh, video. It's online now. I think we'll be showing it at the lunch break. Um, this is where we would invite you to take a picture of the screen, get the link. And for those of you that didn't take a picture, you can always Google it. Okay, and let's switch to a little bit more discovery hacking here. 
Okay, so by integrating play games, and this appeals not only to the achievers, but also to any one of the archetypes, there's several ways that you can get incremental installs. So the first and most obvious one, get a great rating. You have a great title, it's high quality, you will see a higher uplift in installs, and we encourage you to focus on that. People like play games. Go figure. Yeah. Um, next one is, is when you integrate play games, and this is particularly interesting for the Achiever persona, the store will show different types of badges, including the fact that this game has achievements, and that is one little edge that you can get that allows this user to make the decision to install and play your game. Now let's switch over to the play games app. Fascinating feature of this experience is you can see what your friends are playing. So you, if you were to look at my recently played games, you'd see that I'm playing Brave Frontier and Robot Unicorn Attack 2, fantastic titles. And you tap through those, they would take you to the Play Store and convert those people into new users. Also in the Play Games app, we have uh, specialized top charts that show games that have integrated with Play Games, including a popular multiplayer category and the ability to search for those titles within it as well. And lastly, we announced this week that we've updated the game categories in the Google Play Store with 18 new genres, and that helps people find games that they love in a genre that they care about. But the real question is, how do we approach our stealth gamer? They appreciate sign-in with Cloud Save, but we don't really have anything for social discovery for them until now. So we're adding Game Gifts to the list of Google Play game services. Uh, game Gifts is a service that enables users to both send and ask each other for in-game items. I'm going to go through the basic flow. So we start off by uh, actually giving UI in the game to actually send an extra life. And of course, extra lives look like mushrooms. And to just show we're honest, here's the code you would actually execute to do this. All you do is request a send intent with type gift. Inside of the intent, you can include a binary payload, whatever you want, the lifetime of the gift in days, an icon, uh, and a description. Back to our flow. Google Play Game then displays the UI to select the player to gift. I recommend following this example and gifting me. The request heads into our cloud, and a notification is posted to the receiver's device. Um, they actually get this aggregate view of anyone who sent them gifts, uh, whether or not they're actually in their circles, and then from there they can actually accept the gift. Now, if they don't yet have the game, then they're brought to Google Play, and Google Play will go and install the game, and then they can actually accept the gift, and this is what it looks like. Okay? Um, you actually end up getting incoming requests in an unconnected bundle. And our game helper sample also provides a get request method to fetch these requests as in this example. Um, we also register a request listener, which means if the game is actually running, uh, you can actually uh, just get these game requests within the game. You don't have to direct people into this flow. And you can accept them just by handling requests. Uh, and the game should probably display some UX to allow the gifts to be accepted since play games is not. And, uh, Here's how you actually handle the callback once you've accepted the request. Uh, note that the response doesn't actually contain details about the request, which is why I cached the request objects to begin with. Uh, and yes, you, those empty blocks is where you'd actually handle those, uh, the requests within your game. OK, so back to our flow. Now we've accepted the request, and we get an extra life. Um, you can also actually do the, show the inbox for the request inside of your game. So uh, we talked a little bit about gifting, and that was a pretty complicated flow, but I actually left something out. Uh, so after you've actually accepted the gift, we actually send a, uh, uh, a give you, allow you to get the results of the transaction. And this allows you to do things like trades within our gifting system. So this is pretty cool. Instead of just accepting the life, you can actually prompt the user and say, hey, do you want to trade this for some other item? And sure. And uh, so then it'll actually, if the user accepts that trade, it'll send a message back. And then you can find out that the item was traded. And this way, you can actually set up complex flows. You could actually say, hey, um, no, I'm not going to accept this item, but here is my offer. And you could actually have a complex negotiation scenario going on between players, all hosted by play games. Uh, so now you've made a game that all three archetypes play and discover using play games, which is awesome. But the next question is, how do you know if I'm successful? So I'm turning it back over to Greg. So, so to precisely answer the question of how you're successful, you need to think about who are these different personas and how can I see that I'm engaging them and that Play Games is actually making a difference. So this week we're, we're, we're launching a, a, a new update to the Google Play Developer Console. Uh, we call it Enhanced Play Games Statistics. Uh, what's fascinating about the statistics for Play Games adopters is it allows you near zero effort analytics by virtue of incorporating Google Play Games. 
It comes in the form of a daily dashboard that you can view, uh, providing you player and engagement analytics for you to better measure the success of your titles between updates and for the types of content you added. So let's take, let's take a closer look. Okay, that's too close. All right, so for the best game ever, you need the best ever dashboard. Um, and so, so we'll do a quick tour here. What I can, can see in this best game ever is a quick at a glance of metrics of recent days of new players and active players, ones that I've converted into coming back. I can also get a quick glance at my retention data, uh, which gives me a quick glance at my several days of running day two averages. And then I can look at my engagement statistics, particularly for achievements and leaderboards, achievements both in terms of what's earning and the mean time to unlock, and also in leaderboard activity in terms of scores posted. Uh, the dashboard also provides delta metrics, so I can, at a glance, quickly determine whether my, I'm increasing or decreasing engagement with my players. And I can use this in a variety of scenarios depending on how I, I manage my game. So let's take a look at the player stats when you dive deep. Um, this gives you your trend lines for players who sign in to play games. And, you know, your, 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 your rubric is, I have new players who are coming in, I can see which ones are becoming active, and I can see how I'm retaining them. So the quintessential scenario here is you've just updated your title. Your goal of that title was to improve the, uh, or rather reactivate all of your users or a, a large swath of them, and you could see your trend lines in your active players to validate whether you've accomplished that. A uh, more interesting scenario is through player retention. So this dashboard gives you the ever important new player return rate. And what new player return rate is, is you know, here's the number of people who started playing on this day, and one, two, seven, and 30 days later, they came back. And many of you, you know, use this as, as a key metric for deciding whether the early game of your title is, uh, is, 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 is compelling or it's successful. And so the use case here, you just updated your title to compress, let's say, your tutorial flow and maybe enhance some of the things that you're showing within the first 24-hour period with the goal of increasing day two retention. And so what you would see here on, let's say, March 8th, uh, going to from March 7th, is you accomplish that goal. You saw a bump in day two retention as a result, and you know that your tutorial flow changes were, were fixed. And again, this data is all based on play games signed in users, um, gives you all of this data on, on, a, on a daily basis. Let's switch over to the, uh, the engagement analytics. So this focuses on achievements and leaderboards. And so if you think about the archetypes that we talked about earlier, such as the achiever um, and, the, and, the, and the competitor, let's say that you added an achievement to towards the end of your game, and you can kind of see that, okay, this is the one that helps them get to that very special level that I know has a ton of content. I can see if my achiever is actually chasing that or whether they're, they're finding things that are impeding them along the way. Um, and or if, if the competitor is, let's say you added a new tournament mode to your game, you could use the leaderboard that's backing that tournament to see the number of scores that are posted and the velocity of, of people engaging in that to decide whether your tournament system was successful. So we're very excited to, to launch this for all Play Games adopters. It's available in the, the Google Play developer console this week. Um, we can't wait to see what you do to improve the, uh, the, the metrics of your titles. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our talk. Uh, we're going to do a quick recap to see what we learned today. Uh, first is, is we learned that Play Games is a highly concentrated network of people who love playing games. We know that they play longer, they play more often, and they're more likely to monetize in your title. We learned about three personas, the achiever, the competitor, and this stealth gamer. For the competitor, we have direct social experiences, and for the achiever, we have progression mechanics. And for the stealth gamer who is interested in passive social experiences, We've launched Game Gifts, which we'll be rolling out with the next Play Services update over the next week. We learned a number of growth hacking techniques uh, using Play, Google Play Store and the Google Play, Google Play Games, such as the top charts in the, in, the, in the Games app and seeing what people are playing. And through multiplayer notifications, you can convert new users who have not played the game by virtue of social discovery. And last and certainly not least, we give you tools to measure your success through the Google Play Developer Console with enhanced play game statistics for all of your signed-in users. And with that, that brings us to the end of our talk. Uh, Dan and I would thank you for joining us. We have a fantastic lineup for Google Developer Day today, and we'll be taking uh, questions outside in the back after this. Thank you very much. Thank you.